Hello and welcome to this video. Today we will be doing what I like to call Cajun Kimchi. Um, for this, we are going to be using Napa cabbage. Um, I've got a bowl with just celery, a little bit of rock, broccoli, and carrots. We're also going to be using one apple. Um, we're going to be using a whole bottle of sriracha. We've got one radish, one generic, just not special radish. We are also going to be using mustard powder. Um, just cheap Creole seasoning. A little bit of ginger. And garlic. So, um, the first thing we're going to be, we're also going to be, we're going to have to salt our cabbage. We're going to have to get this, salt it, and let that soak. I'm going to be using a wet salt solution. You can use dry salt and do this. I'm using salt water. Go ahead and do it. And what I've used, I've used... 200 mill or 2,000 milliliters of water and eight heaping teaspoons of salt. I've already mixed that up. It's setting off camera, um, cooling down. But to, to, to prepare our cabbage, what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to cut it here about the depth of the knife. Then we're going to take it and we're going to pull it apart. And this is totally, you could cut it all the way through. Um, set this to the side. Um, you can cut it all the way through, but all this does is retain this aesthetic of just being broken up leaves and where if you cut it through, it would be smooth like this. This is an aesthetic choice. If you decide to cut your cabbage all the way through and not pull it apart, it's not going to affect the taste. It's not going to affect the texture, texture or anything. It is just what it is. It's, you know, it's an aesthetic thing. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to cut it again. And re repeat. We're just going to pull it apart. Set this to the side. I've got actually more cabbage than what's going to call for. Because that whole, of, that whole head of Napa cabbage is not going to fit in this quart jar. Not going to happen. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to take our cabbage. We're going to cut it. When we're here in the leafy green area, we're going to make fairly large cuts. Get that real leafy. But as we start getting back here into the heart, we'll make smaller cuts. It's denser. And we're going to do this. Um, and as I was saying, I have got a lot more cabbage than what I can use to make kimchi out of. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probably make two batches of kimchi, probably make a second batch off camera. Then what I'm going to do is whatever cabbage I have left over, I'm going to give it to the chickens and let them convert it into eggs which they're always happy to do. They always like um, converting food into eggs for us. That's just their thing. So we've got our cabbage cut. 
I don't know if I can get the angle on the camera or not, but it was step off camera. We got our bowl of salt water. And that's all this is, is salt water. And we're going to take set this here so it blocks the little cam, the secondary camera. We're just going to put it in here. I'm going to slurp it around. Get everything in here. Okay. And we're going to do that every so often while we're cutting the rest of our things up. Uh, I'm going to set this back off camera. Now, what I have here is another bowl. And this bowl has my uh, sriracha in it. Um, needless to say, this is a stunt bottle. This is the stunt double. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, and you do this to taste. Um, this is a new bottle of mustard powder. Oh, now, this is the bottle I used on my other fermentation. Do it to taste. Um, I know about how much I'm going to, how much I like for taste. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a measuring spoon and we're going to measure this out so you can see a little bit better and you don't have to take my word for it on the thing what, or on the measurement. Um, like I said, do this to taste. Do this to what you like, what kind of taste, you know, how much mustard you want. Okay, I'm back. What we're going to do is we're going to measure four tablespoons. One. Two. Three. Four. And we're going to do the same thing with our Creo seasoning. Um, I know this is brand new because I just bought it a couple hours ago. So we'll go ahead and open it. Don't try this at home, kids. It's not safe. Yay. There we go. And we're going to put two tablespoons of the Creo seasoning. One. And the Creo seasoning, like the mustard powder, powder, do it to taste. Okay. Two. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and put a third one in just for grins and giggles. I'm going to set this back to the side. <coughs> Whoa! <coughs> That's such pungent. Set this bowl over here. Uh -huh. So what happens when you deal with that much pepper? Okay. The dog's named Pepper, by the way, too. Um, we're going to go ahead and stir our lettuce a little bit in the salt water. Keep it. Let it absorb as much of that salt out of the water as it can. What we're going to do, so I figure out what I did with my knife, is we're going to go ahead and chop this up. And you chop it, you know, to your liking. 
I'm going to throw this in our salt water. Let the, water, let the salt work on it a little bit. When we get done with all of this in the salt water, we are going to wash it off. All right, throw those in there. Take some more celery. Yep. Did not realize I had that in the way. Sorry about that. Cut these into little long lengths. Little celery spears. And you can cut them as big or as small as you want. It's all completely up to you. And you, you can even, if you want to, cut them this way. I don't, you know, but it, I mean, it's completely up to you. It's whatever blows your hair back. Mix everything into the bowl. Salt water. A lot of people tend to cut these long ways. But I like cutting them into medallions. It's just me. Plus, it's faster. Um, just FYI, I bought the baby carrots because they're already peeled, and I don't pretty I don't care to peel a whole lot of stuff. Um, I am going to have to peel the garlic, but. I am told, I haven't ever done this, I've told you to use the back of your knife to peel off the garlic before you cut it up. So, you will find out. Like I said, and I'll be off camera when I wash this. Um, all you do is put it through a strainer, wash off, what strain all the salt water off, just give it a real quick rinse. Um, all this stuff's going to absorb the salt out of the water as we go. Just call that good on the uh, our garlic. The garlic down here, garlic up here. We'll cut off. I'm not garlic. This is ginger. Like I said, I have heard and read that you can take the back of your knife and skin it, and it looks like and it looks like it's working to a certain degree. Yeah. See. Huh. So you can leave the skin on your garlic, but it. From what I understand, it does get a very gets a little bit different uh, taste. Um, some people will grade the garlic. I tend just to get off a piece I need. I tend just to dice it. Ooh, that garlic's strong. I smell it. And I don't know if. What I do is actually a true dice. I just cut up into real small pieces and put it in there. But this is going to go 
This and the garlic's going to go in with the mustard seed and the Creo seasoning and all that good silly stuff. Just a little antidote while we're doing this. When I, I stopped by HEB this morning, picked up the Napa cabbage and a couple of the other ingredients. And we got the radish. And we're going to use half the radish. And the, the college boy that was checking me out was... Or the guy, yeah, checking me out, you know, going through the, paying for the stuff, was flirting with this little girl, this little college girl that was there working with him. She was bagging up the groceries. And he made a comment that Napa cabbage got its name because it grows in the Napa Valley in California. And I kind of just smiled at him and grinned. And I went, no, it's a it's a Asian or specifically Korean, I believe, cabbage. It has nothing to do with the Napa Valley in California. He just kind of looked at me, and I looked over at the girl. I said, you need to give him a break. He is trying really, really hard. And they both blushed. I mean, they beat red blushed. It was hilarious. Uh, I'm going to take my garlic, or my, gar my radish. And I'm going to put it in with the mustard seed and the other stuff, too. But it's just get this cut up. Like I said, you can cut up. Like, see, you can cut this up any way you want. Just whatever blows your hair back. So. We'll grab our, this bowl, we'll grab our metal bowl. We'll throw that in there. Throw our garlic, or not our garlic, our, is it what's all, um, ginger. That's the ginger. Set this back off camera. Now our garlic. I'm going to probably use two gloves, cloves of garlic. This thing unwrapped. Two cloves, maybe two cloves out. One, two. And we'll do a little quick stir on our lettuce and celery and all that good silly stuff real quick. Get it. Take this. garlic out. We're good on garlic. Okay. We'll throw it off in here real quick with the other stuff. And what we're going to do, now we got this stuff all in here. We're going to mix it by hand. Um, if you haven't taken my wedding band off real quick. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to mix this all in by hand. If you have any open cuts, open plate, you know, put gloves on because you're dealing with a whole lot of spice and it will burn. It will burn you good. So just take all this and we're going to mix this in here. Get all this mixed in really, really good. Because the contents of this bowl will be going into here in a minute. Or as soon as we get it rinsed off. Okay, for the second part of this video, um, I kind of let the batteries go dead in on cam this camera before I had realized it. So... What we're going to do is I'm going to try to do a blow-by-blow -blow recap of what I did. Um, hopefully, I can get it sync up with this box here with 
should be coming up here in a second. Should be a box here showing what the process was. So give me a second and we'll get to it. Okay, we at this point we have already washed. Excuse me. At this point we have already washed our Napa cabbage vegetable medley. Um, we drained it off camera and we put it in the sink. Now what we're getting ready to do is we're going to take it and we're going to mix it in with our sriracha mis our sriracha mixture. Um, you can see in the, the, the video where I held it up to this camera, but like I said, this had stopped. Now I'm cutting up an apple. This is going to provide a little bit of sweetness for the kimchi. The uh, apple, you see, you got to take the seeds and stems and all that off and out. Um, the more the smaller you cut the apple, the sweeter it's going to be because you get more surf, surface area for things to be broken down. Um, I prefer cutting it into little sticks because that gives me about the amount of uh, sweetness that I enjoy when in my kimchi. Like I said, you can do it smaller, you can do it larger. It's all totally up to you, whatever makes you, you know, whatever blows your hair back. Um, so get that in there. Get it in the pot, and at this point, and at this point, I think I was just kind of meandering through the video, killing time. Well, I may or may not have been saying something important there. Um, I can't think of anything. I think I'm going. I'm discussing the different sizes. I'm also discussing this. Recipe is not the only recipe for kimchi. This is a very non-traditional, very Americanized version of kimchi. Um, don't let anyone ever tell you or convince you that this is the only way to do it. Um, like I said, I substitute a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of things that or a one-way trip to, or you know, I drive 80 miles one way to Houston, which is a 160-mile round trip. So, yeah, so I substitute things. Um, there's actually a Korean hot pepper that you're supposed to use to make kimchi. Like I said, 160 miles round trip drive. I'm going to substitute sriracha because sriracha may not give me the traditional kimchi flavor or the traditional kimchi taste, but it's a taste I like, a taste I don't mind. So, and with the mustard seed and the garlic and the uh, ginger and the Creole seasoning, it, it's, it's, a, it's a rather interesting melody mixture of things. Um, then cut up a couple of the apple slices pretty small. Or not pretty small. I made more than just sticks out of them. Um, and once again, all the leftover uh, like seeds and the little apple cores and all that that I cut off and cut out. That is going to go to the chickens so they can recycle it or convert it into uh, eggs. Um which brings up, there's a, a thing I want to try and do in the future. Um, it's basically you're salting egg yolks and make kind of like a little hockey puck out of them. But we'll have to wait on that video. Um, now hopefully, let's see, what are we moving on? Oh yeah, now we are putting, I put in, spontaneously I put in a, tablespoon of a pre-made garlic uh, mixture. Um, it's garlic, parsley, onions, uh, some of the garlic's raw, some of the garlic's roasted, and it works really good, um, tastes really good, and if you're, if you're not a fan of garlic, do not put this in your kimchi, do not. 
But if you are and you really, really like garlic, there you go, dude. This is it. And with the two fresh um, garlic cloves I put in earlier, oh, man, this is a heavenly garlicky taste. It's really good. So here in a second, I should be putting it in. Shouldn't be too much longer. but And I'm sorry for messing up the as I was doing it type portion of the video, but it is what it is. Um, I had my head up my butt. I do. Yeah. I just put it in now. What we're getting ready to do now is take our cabbage vegetable mentally, put it in the, uh, silver basin. Yeah. See, there's the, the, I, hopefully if I remember, I will put a link to her webpage. Cause that is some really good stuff if you like garlic. I know. Hopefully, I'll put it here in the description down below. Um, there we go. We're putting the, getting it all put in there, getting it ready to get mixed up. Yeah, there we go. Get it in there. All right. And we're gonna make a hot peppery mess. Um, at this point, you need to. If you have if you have sensitive skin, if you have cuts or any kind of compromise of your skin, wear rubber gloves, wear food grade rubber gloves. Because you are dealing with the mustard, you're dealing with uh, ginger, you're dealing with the Creole seasoning, you're dealing with the uh, ah, I forgot the name of it, the, the red sauce. Um, and that is hot and it will burn you it will burn your skin especially if you have sensitive skin or an open cut or an open wound this will this particular mixture of, of things will burn and it will burn forever um, my hands are fairly tough i'm still i got cream i just put cream and stuff on after doing all that um, it took a while to wash that smell out of my the pepper smell out of my hand um, i still have my wedding band off um I need to put it on once everything gets done with this video, but we are now going, what are we doing here? We are, oh, we're getting ready to put our final mixture into the quart mason jar. What I am showing, and you can't see it because I think I bring them down, but there's a fermentation weight which is pretty much a glass white that you set on top of it. Yeah, right here in the corner, I just, or right here in this corner, I set it down. It's basically, it keeps stuff, uh, this is the bubbler lid. I'll get back to the white here in a second. This bubbler lid, it acts just like a bubbler on a fermenter. It has a little date ring, it lets carbon dioxide out, and nothing in. Simple. Getting back to the fermentation weight, all that does is as things break down, they get lighter and they want to float above your brine. So what all this does is keeps it from coming up and getting exposed to oxygen. The, um, it's just, like I said, it's just glass weight. You can improv, you can make all kinds of improv weights at home that work just as well. They those I just saw those I'm lazy they're they're a convenience like I said you don't have to use them you can use a small ash glass ashtray you can use a ziploc bag full of water it does the same thing now we are going to pack our jar yes we're going to pack our jar full of our kimchi mix um I had a little bit left over and the kimchi, the, the the stuff, stuff, the hot sauce, and the mustard, and all that, you really don't want to give to chickens because it will taint the eggs. So I took it out and threw it over the fence, and we'll let other wild animals eat it, um, rabbits or what have you. Yeah, I'm pa I pack it in there pretty good. Um, I mean, it looks good. It has that traditional red kimchi look to it. Um, yeah, dumping out a little bit of the extra so I can get my weight in there. Yep, yeah, there's the weight. See, I pick up 
And there I go. Uh, there we go. I'll put it in there. Yeah, squish it down. See, it's going to pack. It's packed. I've got all the air pretty much pushed out of that. Um, I'm going to put the bubbler lid on. Uh, and I did wipe the jar down afterward before I set it up to ferment. It's gonna the fermentation is gonna take about a month, month and a half, uh, to complete. Um, like I said, it looks oh, that's pretty. Um, my hands and all the stuff all all over my hands don't so. And that is pretty much uh, homemade kimchi, so. Until next time, peace, love, better brewing.